Yeah, anyway, good morning. We we'll start? Okay. <clears throat> so last, uh, which, was the, which was the remedy we spoke in the last class? Spicy. Okay. So before your friends join, we'll have a quick revision about spicy and then I'll start with a new remedy. Okay. So what are the key points of spicy Okay, good. Headache. Headache which starts from the left, left occiput, ascends up and settles over the left eye. Very good. Absolutely right. Okay. Apart from headache, what is? Sensation. What is the sensation they have? As if rain is coming out of the forehead. Good. That was the sensation. Good. Keep it up. What is? Huh? Sensation as if? Yeah, yeah. See, especially we are talking of neuralgias. Yeah, neuralgias wherein they have pain, as if hot needles have been pierced. And neuralgia is mainly trigeminal neuralgia. Very good. Okay. What is? Only, I mean, heart complaints. Yeah. What was the heart complaints we mainly saw? Anjana. See, I also use the word. You don't see many structural changes related to heart. It is mainly uh, angina. Okay, ischemic heart disease, ISD, angina. And we also saw palpitations. Audible, Audible loud palpitations. Good. Then, toothache. Good. Toothache. Agreed. What was the specialty of toothache? Better way? Smoking. 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 Smoking ameliorates uh, toothache or tobacco. And we also had tobacco heart under uh, heart affections of spicelia. Good. And GI, what else we had? There's something very important. Uh, strabismus with worm complaints. Or a very good remedy for uh, pin worms. Good remedy for pin worms, hook worms. Okay. And of course, uh, which is the other one? Round bones, round bones. Okay. <clears throat> See, now uh, we'll uh, discuss another remedy. A new remedy today. Uh, hopefully, 45 minutes I'll try to cover this remedy. A very important remedy. When we spoke of spigelia, we saw spigelia acting on nerves, it will cause neuralgia. Okay. Similarly, we are discussing a remedy today, which again has an affinity for uh, nerves. And here, like spigelia, you also see the action does not go beyond neuralgia. Okay? So you don't see conversions or you don't see paralysis. Okay? All that serious nervous affection in this remedy. So the remedy that we are going to discuss today is, uh, uh, any wild guess? I know, looking at the plant, it might become difficult to guess. But, if at all you remember, you remember uh, seeing this in a pharmacy class, pharmacy department, okay? It's a very poisonous plant. It's a very toxic plant. If you read in Wikipedia, there's a huge information given. See, and the beauty of uh, reading this remedy in Wikipedia is, when you look at the toxicity, you will be surprised how nicely we can uh, correlate this with what is the advantage of studying toxicology? Which is that part that will become very useful? Which is that part that will become very useful? Toxicology. What is that? Spear affection. Okay. So, uh, I, I suggest you people go back uh, home and you read uh, this remedy. Mesirium. Mesirium in Wikipedia, you have a lot of uh, information given about this, how toxic it is, how poisonous it is, and how it can affect the human beings. So in detail it is mentioned. When you take this accidentally, which are all the parts that gets affected, and which parts that gets affected is what beautifully reflects on this peer affection. Okay, so mesirium is what we are going to discuss today, a simple remedy. 
the plant basically and the tincture of the bark is what we use in homeopathic preparation and uh, it is seen growing in Europe and America. This is the habitat. For a final year student, uh, this information may not be very, very useful. Okay. But, but this is very important. I, as I just introduced, this as a poisonous plant. Okay. Now, the toxicity of mesirium is because of two very important alkaloids, mesirine and daphne. These are the two important alkaloids, okay, which sums up to the entire toxicity of uh, mesiria. Okay, so we'll quickly look at uh, the spear affection. And as I just suggested, studying about the plant, studying about the toxicity of plant, okay, helps us in understanding the spear affection better. Okay, so now what you see is like you know this is uh, our, uh, this plant, you know when it is accidentally taken or when somebody gets poisoned with mesirium accidentally, what they have observed is it mainly affects the uh, mucous membrane of the JAT, hmm? the stomach and the intestines and it will cause violent gastritis or violent inflammation. So what I am trying to tell you is this poison is sensitive to the uh, GA mucous membrane and it will cause inflammation. First point. Okay. Now, second very important thing is that you know not only GA it also affects the lungs. Affecting the lungs, it will cause it will cause uh, inflammation. It will cause inflammation. Okay. So we'll uh, quickly look into the other areas as well. Kidneys. 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 Okay. Now quickly, can I have some remedies acting on kidneys? Yeah. Oh, very good, good. Yeah, I mean, you know berberis, you know sarsaparilla, you also know lycopodium. See, if, if you make it more systematic, remedies which causes inflammation. Remedies which causes inflammation. Nephritis, lower dose cystitis, yeah. So you have remedies like uh, cantharis, apis mellifica, arsenic, terebenthina as a final student. And if you start talk of remedies which will cause stones or which will cure stones, then you have remedies like berberis, sarsaparilla, lycopodium, etc. Okay. So what I want you to understand is, this is a remedy which can be nephrotoxic and it will cause again inflammation and it will cause hematuria. Hematuria and there can also be albuminuria. So, a remedy acting on kidneys, it will cause inflammation, hematuria and, and albuminuria. albuminuria. Okay. So, these are few things you need to understand. Hmm? Okay. So, sphere of action, three very important organs. Three very important organs. Okay. Any questions? Any clarification? Okay. We will go ahead slowly and we will try to understand. Skin is one area, you know, even in, see, to be very honest, at least I have never used mesirium in these areas. Because whenever we talk of kidneys, we generally land up with uh, cantharis, we land up with apis, maximum we land up with terebenthina, ar arsenic, okay. So at least in my practice, I have never used mesirium. Same applies to the inflammation. Like, you know, when you talk of, talk of, talk of bronchitis, Okay, money, money, or when you talk of uh, you know gastritis, you know we have better, better remedies. So we miss. But today we will try to understand when mesirium gets indicated in all these conditions. Okay, fine. So one area, as I was just trying to share, in my clinical practice, I have used mesirium for uh, skin affections. Okay, quickly as a final year student, as a dermat student. What uh, comes to your mind when we talk of skin? Huh? Okay, it can be psoriasis, it can be dermatitis, arctic area, eczema, erythema, very good. Huh? Pustules, boils, abscess, purpura, okay, good, good, good. Yes. Now, what will uh, mesirium cause is very important. Okay. Mesirium mainly causes uh, vesicular inflammation. Vesicular inflammation. 
I will explain this and it will cause ulcers. See, when I am narrating sphere of action, what is it that should also parallelly, parallelly run in your mind? Huh? What is it that should be parallelly running in your mind as a fine day student is, is Mayasana. Is Mayasana. So, sphere of action, sphere of action will also tell us about the Mayasmatic background of a remedy. So, what is it that you are seeing here? One second, one second. What is it you are seeing here? You are seeing more of inflammation and you are seeing more of, uh, you know, hemorrhages, more of albuminuria, violent inflammations and now I introduce you to something called as ulceration. So, predominantly, as we try to unlock mesirium, you will understand, mesirium is predominantly sorosyphilitic. Sorosyphilitic. So, tendency for growth in mesirium, though I will be talking of the next uh, heading, though it is there, but you see more of inflammation and more of ulceration. So, predominant myosin will be sorosyphilitic. Hope I am clear. Yes, sir. Okay. See, this is how you should start thinking. When something has been explained, there will be some um, reason why we are giving you an explanation. So, your mind should start thinking. Okay. What is the correlation? Fine. And you should also start similarly applying it into the particulars. Okay. Stomach. This is what might happen. Okay. We will we'll try to explore that area. Okay. Now, I was trying to tell you about the uh, fibrous tissue or the action of mesirium on the connective tissue. Okay. Any quick remedy is fast acting on connective tissues. What will happen? You have people coming to your clinics with strain, with joint affections. Okay. What remedies? Ruta, Restox. Good. Asafotida. Ledam. Yes, good. Agreed. Ledam. Brainia, fine? Okay, many of those remedies. Now you also have to remember, mesirium also has an action on the uh, tendons, the ligaments or uh, fibrous tissue. Here, according to Dr. Fatak, in a beautiful material medica for final years, Dr. Fatak, he says, it will cause abscess. It will cause abscess, okay? Abscess of uh, the, you know, our abscess in the ligaments, Abscess in the tendon. Da? Generally, what remedies come to your mind when we talk of abscess? Hepatsal, Silesia, Merck, okay, Calcarea self. These are all remedies which will produce pus. But where is mesirium having the capacity to produce pus is in the uh, ligaments tendons, in the fibrous tissue. Okay. So tomorrow you have a patient who has pus in the fibrous tissue, one remedy you can think of is mesilia. It also acts on bones, when I meant connective tissue, I will discuss a little later. And the last area I want to highlight here is uh, lymphatics. Lymphatics. You will have uh, acrid uh, secretions. You will have acrid secretions. Congestion and acrid secretion. So for students who join late, we started with a remedy called mesirium. Mesirium. It's a plant. It's a poisonous plant. And uh, you have not missed much. I have just introduced one component of mesirium and that is a very important component and that is spear affection. So spear affection, what did we see? Skin. GA. GA what? Inflammation. Violent inflammation. Inflammation on skin, I mean sorry, inflammation on the mucous membrane. We saw this acting on the lungs, causing again inflammation. And then we also saw this acting on the kidneys, nephritis, yeah. albuminuria. Skin was a very important area, as one of your friend was trying to tell. Eruptions, vesicular eruptions. So what is it indirectly trying to tell us? Where do we indicate mesilia? See, as a fine day student, when I say vesicular eruption, something should come to your mind. So where is mesilium getting indicated? Okay, good. Something beyond. Final last one. Herpes. Herpes. I'll give you a beautiful indication of mesilium a little later. See, this is how your mind should start uh, thinking. Fine. 
I don't know if it is really thinking, but I am trying to stimulate you. If it is not thinking in those planes, please channelize it or please give instruction. You need to think in those planes. Nata, vesicular eruption. Your friend said, pox, beautiful, I got nothing against. Chicken pox. Or I wanted herpes. Okay. And I'll tell you a little later where mesirium gets indicated in herpes. Okay? Good. So we'll look at the ailments. We'll look at the ailments. It's a predominant remedy acting on the skin. Allah. So we have ailments from suppressed eruptions. And homeopathy, as a homeopath, we all believe in theory of suppression. Right? So like, you know, when there is something on the surface, if you apply some external application, this might disappear. But this will travel deep inside, based on your weak organ. That will get affected. Okay. Ailments from suppressed skin eruptions. Plenty of remedies in homeopathy. Your responsibility will increase. Henceforth, you should also add mesirium. Now, what is the next question? What will mesirium do? For example, in a mesirium patient, if his, if his skin eruptions are suppressed, what will happen? Is the next question that should come to your mind. So, what will happen in mesirium? In mesirium, three things can happen. Okay? Headache. Hmm? And there is something very characteristic. Must be, this is the only remedy mentioned in your repertory. Deafness which comes after suppress eruptions of the scalp. I'll, I'll repeat this statement. See, when I say suppress eruptions, in mesirium, what is the cause for deafness? Suppress eruptions of the scalp. In your body, somewhere else there are eruptions that is getting suppressed, that also could be mesirium. But mesirium has something very specific. Eruptions on the scalp, okay, and they apply some steroidal cream, Eruptions beautifully disappear at the compromise of what? At the compromise of your hearing. Sir, so, till I had eruptions, I had absolutely no issues with my hearing. And then, you know, we went to the best dermatologist, something got applied and this disappeared. And, you know, I am not able to hear after that. So, that is misery. So, what will happen when you give misery? Quick. What will happen when you give misery? Hearing. Hearing will restore, first point. And second point? Very good. You should also educate the patient. Boss, your hearing will definitely get back. As a compliment, your skin eruptions also will come. Please don't do the same mistake of getting it suppressed and losing your hearing. So this is what you need to explain. Okay. So it could be deafness. We have many remedies which has asthma after suppressed eruptions. You can also add mesirium to the list. Okay. So first element is uh, suppressed eruptions. Second thing is uh, bad effects of vaccination. Bad effects of vaccination. Okay. After vaccination. Unfortunately, <coughs> we are seeing uh, so many people, so many patients coming to our clinic last uh, one year, one and a half years, okay, with a uh, lot of complications, okay, related to post-vaccine uh, effect, okay. Anyway, we will not uh, discuss that on this platform, but here in uh, mesirium, you will have skin eruptions. After vaccination, there will be, there will be skin eruption, okay. Uh, the last ailment I want to highlight is is mercury mercury if you read our old materia medicas mesirium is called as vegetable mercury okay mesirium podophyllum these remedies they are called as vegetable mercury okay because they have ailments from mercury and they also have the capacity to antidote the bad effects of mercury. Hmm? So vegetable mercury can be uh, mesirium, which is the other end I just spoke. It can also be podophyllum. Okay. So see what will happen after mercury? I, I forgot to mention there, bony pains. 
bony pains after bad effects of mercury. See if you recall your organon or if you are uh, students who read lesser writing and all, mercury was a very common medicine which was abused from to take till syphilis. For every damn problem mercury was given. Okay. Fine. And people would have lot of side effects because of mercury. Then, so a very important remedy to antidote bad effects of mercury. Hope I am clear. So two small areas we have touched. One is spear affection and the second is ailments. Boys, any questions? Clear? We'll go ahead. Okay. Now the third component will be what is characteristic? What is PQRS in mesirium? There are five, six PQRS symptoms. I've just listed it out for you. I'll just explain each of them. Just listen so that our further learning becomes easy. Is this clear and visible? Okay. Now what I have here is, if it is visible, what is it that you see here is? You see uh, vesicular eruptions. So what is it that I'm trying to show you here is? Herpes. Herpes. Herpes joster. You have herpes simplex, you have herpes genitalis and you also have herpes joster. Okay. Now I told you, when did I use this word? Where did this come up? Spear affection. Mesirium produces vesicular eruption. Vesicular eruption. So what you see here is, mesirium, generally it is indicated for what is the complication of uh, herpes? Huh? Very good. Neuralgia. Good. Neuralgia. Along the nerves, you will have uh, pain. And trust me, people who have suffered, they know it. The burning pain is so bad. You see people literally shouting with burning. Very bad burning. Along the nerve roots, they will have burning. Very characteristic. Post-herpetic neuralgia. Mesirium is a beautiful remedy for post-herpetic neuralgia. One, okay. And there are a lot of other remedies. Any uh, quick uh, recall? Post-herpetic neuralgia. Quick recall could be even the quickness of looking at the arsenic. Arsenic. And you know arsenic? Burning better by? Burning better by what? Warmth. Warmth. Okay. There is burning. But arsenic patient feels better by warm application. Post herpetic neuralgia. Another remedy, ranunculus bulbosa. As a final year student, you should remember is ranunculus bulbosa. Okay. I have used mesirium for this condition. I remember one old man, 70, 72, uh, you know, with bad burning. And uh, we don't consider the constitution here. Based on uh, the symptoms, we make a small totality. When is the burning more, what uh, uh, you feel better with, what aggravates your burning, make a small totality and you prescribe. Okay. Mesirium is a beautiful remedy for uh, post herpetic neuralgia. Zincum, uh, variolinum, tuja, arsenic, silicia, murk are few more remedies which can be thought of for post herpetic neuralgia. Okay. Now second quick thing here is eczema, very good. Now, I have specifically shown an area. Every remedy, every remedy has an affinity for a specific area. There are few remedies only on joints. There are few remedies only on exposed parts. There are few remedies only on covered parts. This is the beauty of homeopathy. Fine? Few remedies have capacity to produce eruptions only on genitalia. I mean, that is the affinity of a remedy. Now, when you look at mesirium, when you said, when you said eczema, I was pretty impressed. Now, all eczemas can we think of mesirium is the next question that will come up. No. So, mesirium has its own peculiarity. Now, what is the peculiarity you have in mesirium? Main thing is over the scalp, over the scalp and you have crust formation okay and underneath that crust you have pus okay beautiful description of mesirium uh, eczema eczema over scalp wherein you have scalp formation you have crust formation 
underneath the crust you will have discharges which can be thick and which can be yellowish remember this okay so head is covered with thick leather like crust under which thick and white pus collects this is mesodium picurus okay now the third thing here is uh, we were talking of pains i i was telling you about uh, its affinity for bones okay bony pains from bad effects of mercury i also mentioned under ailments from bony pains from bad effects of mercury okay uh, moving ahead quickly another indication of skin eczema what is the cause for eczema in uh, mesoderma what is the cause for eczema skin eruptions coming up eczema after vaccination okay any other remedies that you can recall tuja good this remedy called as melantinum in no sort variolinum melantinum vaccinum tuja vaccinum and melantinum are both no sorts okay and of course you know tuja bad effects of vaccination these are the remedies you need to remember okay so one last uh, pqrs here is mesiram patient they have desire for ham ham is poor pig meat so mesiram patient has desire for pig meat okay any other remedies you can think of constitutions who have desire for uh, pig meat pork tuberculinum okay tuberculinum calcarea fos tuberculinum calcarea fos are few remedies you should remember aversion to pork aversion to pork single remedy and that remedy is pulsatilla but anyway, aversion to pork is pulsatilla okay pulsatilla so desire you have tuberculinum you also have sanicula hemamelis and uranium nitricum for your information okay desire now uh, we look at the mind now before i take up mind any questions we are going slow we spoke of sphere of action and sphere of action you saw mainly kidneys gi lungs skin fibro or fibro uh, fibrous tissues and last thing we also saw there was huh? lymphatics lymphatics and ailments from were three one was mercury second thing was vaccination and third thing was suppressed eruptions and then we looked at the what is it uh, uh, pqrs okay now we are looking at the mind mind hope it's clear hmm? see mind uh, though there are so many symptoms keeping the findings in mind we'll talk of symptoms which are only important for you okay and one such very important symptom that you have in mesorium is there is anxiety anxiety why right? again you know a lot of remedies which are anxious what is special in mesorium anxiety which is mainly felt in stomach anxiety felt in stomach see uh, what do you understand by anxiety felt in stomach so there are patients coming to a clinic and they tell dr sir uh, i feel gabrahat and when you ask them where do you feel the gabrahat where do you feel the anxiety you will be shocked with their quick answer i feel uh, you know here i feel here okay i feel in the genitalia i mean it could be any area that they are feeling but this question makes sense where are you feeling anxious many of them might laugh at this question anxiety is felt in head in mind but then which part you are feeling anxious if he is a mesorium patient the anxiety is felt mainly in stomach okay the anxiety is felt mainly in stomach and anxiety about salvation what is salvation moksha atani okay moksha is what uh, at least in hindu mythology or hindu books they talk of salvation christianity muslims they might have their own version but what i am trying to tell you is anxiety about salvation will i get moksha or not is what they are anxious about okay 
and anxiety which comes up after suppressed eruptions and anxiety when is alone these are few anxiety related complaints you have in mesirium i'll just share a small case here and we'll go further uh, one of your uh, intern you know who comes to my clinic she had taken a case uh, two days back about a very young gentleman who had uh, primary infertility and he had issues with his uh, issues with his uh, sperm count so she had taken this case and one uh, thing that came up in the mind was he is a very angry uh, character he is a very young boy uh, 26 or 28 married for last two years they trained for kids and unfortunately because of his uh, problem uh, you know they are not i mean wife is not able to conceive so this gentleman <coughs> had a uh, thing what was that very angry type and what he does immediately after uh, he gets angry is he will go to the person on whom he has shouted and he will go say i am very sorry uh, please forgive me i shouldn't have scolded uh, sorry i scolded that okay it is not happening once next time again you will get angry not that you know you forgive me i forgive you it's not over next time again he gets angry and you know he feels sad oh i shouldn't have scolded i did wrong scolding them and he will immediately go and he will tell sorry now what is the situation how do you convert this into your rubric is very very important uh, very good beautiful so saya some uh, inputs okay I'll, i'll i'll just modify but it's a beautiful uh, input from saya anybody who can make it little more clear see there is a rubric broader rubric anger under anger there is a sub rubric accompanied with what is it anger accompanied with quick repentance so that is a rubric is that clear you are angry and what are you doing after angry you are feeling bad that is repentance okay see probably somewhere they are also worried about salvation because they would have done something wrong they they could have done something wrong and they feel because i've done wrong will i get moksha is what mesirian patient might also have it in your in his mind but anger accompanied with quick repentance is the perfect rubric okay that gentleman uh, we had given him uh, sulfur huh? now why i am giving you that example here is mesirian also has this situation what is that situation angry at trifles what do you understand by this trifles means small things he is wife his mother who has accompanied them will be telling sir this guy small small things he badak jata hai gussa aa jata hai aise chota chota baat pe small things he gets angry perfectly harmless things two of you are sitting the same statement i would have told to both of you one person would have given a Uh, damn about it. He won't have cared about it. But mesirium, harmless things will affect him. And but he's so sorry for it. So this is what I wanted to tell you. And this is given in your repertory. Anger accompanying with quick repentance. Okay, that is mesirium. There are some eight remedies. You can also add. Uh, I mean, mesirium, sulfur, lot of other remedies. Anger. when i said small things costless without any cost he might get uh, you know he might get angry and anger is very very violent okay so anger anxiety and the last thing here is indifference not caring what is indifference when somebody tells this guy is very indifferent what do you mean you don't care now you see how beautifully it is told indifference to pleasure indifference to surrounding indifference to people indifference to company see this last thing i have taken it from your repertory seems everybody dead to him see he is in a group he is in a group and uh, for him what is happening in the group does not matter fine somebody is cracking a joke somebody is uh, dying with pain 
For him it will not matter. Okay? It's a very indifferent way. Again, whenever we, saw, we talk of indifference, the only remedy comes to our mind is sepia. Yeah. yeah. But then if you look into your repertory, that is the beauty of repertory. Repertory has so many remedies. Phosphorus. Every lady would like to have a husband. If you ask any homeopathy student, which constitution you want to, to be your husband, I know if you take a voting, uh, 90 to 90 plus, unless you don't know phosphorus well, they will all tell, sir, we want a guy like phosphorus. He is our ideal man. But then when you look at phosphorus, phosphorus is also very indifferent. Fine? Right? Which will come at the syphilitic stage. Very loving, very caring, very charming. You know phosphorus. When they, wherever they are, there are people around them. That is the kind of aura, that is the kind of energy, that is the kind of magnetic power phosphorus will have. Any damn girl. She may be telling, I don't know why. Without my conscience, I am getting attracted to him. You know, that is the kind of aura. No, I mean, there are girls who, who keep telling this. That is the kind of aura phosphorus will carry. Mere ko pata hi nahi chala mai. Girgaya. Girgaya andre, not literally. <laughs> not literally I fell down, but you know, I fell into his trap. Not that he trapped, but that is a kind of aura phosphorus carries. It's a beautiful remedy. If you have not read phosphorus, if you have not understood phosphorus, please read phosphorus. Beautiful remedy. Okay? And phosphorus patients, they need not try hard for girls to fall. It is their natural way, you know. They need to be themselves. Or in extra perfume, extra powder, extra snana, nothing is required, extra butter. They need not do anything. That is something that they are born with, the charmness. Fine? A lady will fall. His mannerism. You know, something they imbibe. They need not learn, they need not go to classes. Lucky ko kaisa patana in three hours. <laughs> there is no cash course that they attend. Uh, you stand like this, when you offer the seat to the lady, this, that, no, 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 this is something phosphorus will know. And that's why, that's why I'm trying to tell you, a lady has to stop herself hard falling into phosphorus. That is the kind of aura phosphorus gets in. But phosphorus is also indifferent, sepia is indifferent, mesirium is indifferent. There are so many remedies which you need to understand, okay? So we'll quickly look, I mean, mind, I'm not going into the details. I've taken up three very important areas, okay? Hope uh, you have clarity on this, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll look at the uh, particular symptoms. I'll limit to head and we'll slowly see the important areas. Now this is something you can start answering so that we can save on time. What do you expect on the head? Please recall the spare affection, please recall the ailments, please recall the characteristic symptoms. Huh? No, no, no. First thing, what will happen in the head? First point. Head will have eruptions. Eruptions. Eruptions which will be like a leather, 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 crust. And underneath you have white discharge coming up. First point. Second thing. Like, you know, uh, this will put it under ears, okay. Hair fall, dandruff. Naturally, the scalp is not a healthy scalp, Allah. So much of eruptions, so you can have offensive discharge coming up from the scalp, okay. And another very important thing you have is, you will have headache, headache. What is the specialty of headache? What causes headache in uh, mesirium? We discussed, good. Suppress eruptions giving rise to headache, okay. And headaches, which, you know, which are very violent, from smallest or slightest vexation, from suppressed eruptions, pain in head extends to the eyes or to the neck. This is how it goes, headache, okay? Now, after head, we will be looking at uh, the eye, very uh, important symptom. What did you see in spigelia? Very good, good. Ciliary neuralgia. Ciliary neuralgia. Supra arbitral neuralgia. Good. So, a only remedy we have in our materia medica, ciliary neuralgia after an operation on the eye where the eyeball is remote. 
Do you understand this? Something wrong with the eyeball, some growth, some injury, something wrong with the eyeball and the ophthalmologist decides to operate the eyeball for some reason. And after the eyeball is operated, okay, if a patient lands up with ciliary neuralgia, you are getting the situation? The only remedy we have is uh, Okay. I have taken this from Fatox. Ciliary neuralgia after eye operation where the eyeball is removed. Remember this? Now this is very important. What did we see here? What did we see here? Deafness. Why deafness? After suppressed head eruptions. Eruptions over the scalp. Okay. And one more very important thing, they also feel a sensation as if the tympanic membrane is open as if air is blowing in. Okay, you know that tympanic membrane, they feel it is broken and uh, air is flowing in. It's just a sensation, a subjective symptom. Okay, deafness after uh, suppressed head eruptions. Now, continuing with neuralgia. Okay, where else you can see neuralgia in uh, uh, Nazaria? What is this neuralgia we are talking about? Huh? What is this neuralgia? Facial neuralgia. Facial neuralgia. From belladonna, from causticum, from aconite, from dull camera, from spigelia. There are a lot of remedies. Facial neuralgia. Okay. Magnesium phos is also a beautiful remedy. Neuralgia, pain comes and goes quickly. And the affected part will be numb. Aggravation eating and amelioration heat near the stove. Like for example, if the lady is cooking or if that stove heat, that heat, the neuralgic pains are better. Okay? That heat, the neuralgic pains are better. That is facial neuralgia. We are talking of uh, fibrous uh, tissue. So one fibrous tissue you can also think of here is teeth. 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 So toothache. Toothache. Quickly, other remedies for toothache? From aconite to zincum. There are a lot of remedies. Fine. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of remedies. Unfortunately, we are running short of time. Otherwise, we could have uh, discussed how to differentiate. So, for today's class, we will limit to mesirium. What is the myosin you are talking about? So, what do you expect in uh, mesirium? Now, one second. Now, apply the knowledge of myosin. Fine. It could be simple toothache, which can be sorry. When I say syphilitic toothache, what is it? Caries. 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 So there is something called as caries of the root. Many times you would have undergone root canal treatment, RCTs. Fine. So caries of the root or caries of the chrome sites, you have mesirium. Okay. So caries of uh, uh, tooth. Now another very specific modality or a characteristic modality you have in mesirium is they have bad pain and what do they do when their pain is they open their mouth and they take in air so when they take in air the toothache is better that is what you have in mesirium toothache better with mouth open and drawing in air some eight nine other remedies you have in your repertory pulsatilla Sarsaparilla and Clematis erecta are few remedies you need to remember. So toothache better by opening mouth and drawing in ear. Remember the situation. Okay? Hope you are getting it. Head, ears, then we spoke of eyes, then we spoke of teeth. Quickly J. J. Tell me, you know about J. What do you, we have under J? Go back to the square of action. Very good. Inflammation. Violent gastritis. Good. Yeah, very good. You can also have ulcers. See now, what made you think of ulcers? Soro syphilitic. Sora is uh, gastritis, inflammation. Syphilis is ulcers. Now, this is how the knowledge of organa helps you in understanding material medical better. Right? So, uh, gastritis, violent gastritis, violent burning, burning by, better by drinking milk. 
hope uh, you know I have written this here somewhere yeah burning better by drinking milk and eating so what type of ulcer is this what type of ulcer is this it's more of duodenal ulcer duodenal ulcer duodenal ulcer they feel better by eating okay so ulcers gastric ulcers okay uh, inflammations one more symptom you missed here think anybody one symptom we have missed what is it be loud and clear what is that more than bleeding more than bleeding ha huh? some or something we have missed more than vomiting you are not thinking uh, different ha huh? i have already told you one symptom related to stomach what is it anxiety anxiety apprehension anxiety felt in stomach that you can mention anxiety felt in stomach see now the uh, confusion there was stomach so you are thinking of vomiting blood you know you should also think of apprehension and anxiety felt in stomach okay good now constipation you know lower down very bad constipation hard stools they feel if they strain you know the anus will break that is a feeling they have okay hard stools constipation uh <coughs> asthma asthma after suppressed eruptions okay asthma after suppressed eruptions and uh, very important thing uh, you have in uh, can somebody quickly take a wild guess what is it we are trying to focus see some area is been highlighted i am testing your knowledge of anatomy coccyx 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 so injury to coccyx pain after injury to coccyx okay you can think of mesereum also but i that's what i'm trying to tell you we have never used mesereum but in this situation we have had patients and we have used hypericum hypericum silesia bellis ruta five remedies mentioned which are the five remedies hypericum silesia bellis ruta mesir you should not forget okay five remedies now the important area the important area is skin okay so quickly what do we see on the skin so we see two things we see okay we see itching or we see vesicular eruptions and or you can make it more specific what is it herpes or you can also use one more word what is it post herpetic neuralgia okay very violent itching okay itching which is aggravated at night warmth of bed heat of bed warm bath and itching changing places on scratching you understood this there are people who come to our clinic and tell sir you know they have itching here they scratch once they scratch here they will have itching in some other place okay you know once they scratch here it will start somewhere else so changing places on scratching they have itching they scratch that place once they scratch some other area they feel itching so this keeps changing this is peculiar in mesereum okay now the tragedy is anybody who comes to our clinic with itching we think only sulfur and 99% we fail or we would have suppressed sulfur has its own speciality sulfur has its own indications when it comes to itching just because of our lack of knowledge let's not limit every patient suffering with itching to be sulfur okay so other than itching other than eruptions what else can expect in mesereum under skin very good why ulcers sorosephritic okay so ulcers which are deep ulcers which are painful okay and uh, deep hard painful ulcers ulcers with thick yellow white scabs under which you have thick pus getting collected where else in our body we saw the situation we saw this similar situation on the scab 
Okay. Even uh, access, you see the similar thing. Now, uh, I have a beautiful case, it's still under treatment, but I would like to share it here on this platform. We had a 70 years old diabetic lady with an ulcer in the heel. And uh, unfortunately, within three days of my treatment, megots started appearing there. You understand megots? Yes, sir. Uh, 90 to 100 megots. I mean, rough calculation. Uh, the granddaughter who sent the video, I have the video, thinking of the video, looking at the video, you know. Uh, I mean, you have. Uh, not goosebumps. No, no, no. See, because you get goosebumps for different reasons also. So, tomorrow you get goosebumps, don't feel it. You thought of my gods and then I'm getting goosebumps. Goosebumps you get for different reasons. When you see something, for example, if I cure this case, fine, with homeopathy, and then when I narrate this with videos, with photos, then many of you might start getting goosebumps. Because I am halfway through, after our medicine, you know, 80 megahertz have fallen. 80 megahertz have fallen, fallen, fallen. Okay? And uh, still I am sharing it a little early because this granny came uh, two days back also. So megahertz part is cleared. Okay? But uh, treatment is still going on. It's a nice case, but I want you to understand that this science has the capacity to treat something big, something beyond, is what I am trying to tell you. Provided the medicine you give is correct. Okay? If you would have referred this patient to a surgeon, you all, you all, you know better, or you have got better allopathic knowledge than me. <laughs> okay? And this uh, doctor, uh, grandchild who was a homeopath, and who works for a nursing home, she told her, uh, if I take to my nursing home, I have seen such cases, they amputate. So what to do? Should we amputate or should we do something? I just told her, uh, give me three days time. If my homeopathic medicines work, it will work within three days. Otherwise, you please take her to your surgeon and let him decide. Because we need to be fair. We can't play with somebody's leg. Already megahertz are there. Our immunity is damn low. So luckily my medicine worked and uh, it's almost nine days or eight days now. Uh, within three days all the megahertz fall and uh, they have the count, some 80 or 78, must be one or two, they would have missed the number of megahertz which came out and uh, uh, today, as of today, there are no megahertz. Okay? It's a beautiful case. With video I'll share it to you on some other day. But you know, this also reminded me of that uh, case where you know homeopathy could do wonders. Okay? So, mesirium has some modalities. Again, the modalities, if you look, they all suggest uh, syphilitic, night, mercury, touch. Okay? These are all few of the syphilitic modalities. And uh, heat. Heat of stove, what is better than heat of stove? Fish. What fish? Good. Facial neuralgia is better than heat of stove. Good. Okay. Eating, open air, wrapping up. Mesirium is a chilly patient. Mesirium is a chilly patient. Okay. So this is in short about mesirium. Uh, we are exceeding our time. Last two minutes, we will quickly recap mesirium under uh, activity. And what is that activity? Where is mesirium indicated clinically? The clinical indications of mesirium will sum up the entire thing that you have understood about mesirium. So can I have uh, some quick huh? Okay, herpes or post-herpetic neuralgia? Eczema? Huh? Deafness? Asthma? Duodenal ulcer? Gastric ulcer? See, when you start with Duodenal ulcer, gastric ulcer, finish everything to do with stomach. You can also have gastritis, and then you can have constipation. You know, 
very good anxiety neurosis good anxiety neurosis agreed anything else constipation neuralgia abscess of tendons bony pains ciliary neuralgia very good good i am happy when answers are coming from that side i am very very happy good keep it up ciliary neuralgia in an caries of uh, teeth eczema of scalp hair loss dandruff okay hmm? anxiety aayitu so. headaches so. okay ha eh jo jo pain in coccyx coccyxodynia yes good so i hope you got a picture of mesilia ciliary neuralgia after remo after removal of fiber yeah yeah okay okay any quick questions in mesilia urga artha ayta ha so a question that can come up in your exams will be uh, skin affections of in hindi ke tarah skin affections of mesilia is what you can think of uh, one question okay but practically it can be used for various conditions yeah yeah no i mean yeah. see what your friend wants to try to ask here is sir you told uh, there can be anxiety in stomach there can be anxiety in epigastrium chest heart a uh, solar plexus and all is there any specific reason why they have anxiety only in that particular area is what your friend is trying to ask okay see i uh, really can't think of any specific area i mean specific reason but probably those areas might be the sensitive areas of this okay in a given patient those areas can be more vulnerable areas or those can be the sensitive areas where they might start feeling it i can't think of a better reason why epigastrium why here why there okay must be i need to give it a thought but from what i have seen what i have realized is uh, must be those are the uh, uh, sensitive areas okay anything else it's a major player so we are done with plumbum we are done with spigilia and this is our third mesilia mesilia trillium yeah we have also done trillium fine right? so slowly we will try to take up uh, you know bigger remedies i have zincum which is a bigger remedy uh, i need some time to prepare the ppt i'll finish up with the smaller remedies okay thank you